Hey guys, so you remember last Friday I talked about how I was gonna go away and go camping with my family. Now, I did bring some knitting along, and you wanna know what is a bad idea for camping knitting? All over lace is a bad idea. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and we are a hand dyed knitting yarn company based in Vancouver in Canada. And this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where I come every Friday and I talk about knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing. And specifically, I like to talk about making time to make things. Now, over the past many months, I have proclaimed the importance of monogamy in knitting, knitting one project at a time. It's something that I've kind of discovered over the past maybe six months or a year that when I focus only on knitting one project at a time, I get more stuff done. I get more things completed. I take more things to the finish line because I don't allow myself to go and make the next project. Whatever happens to be shiny and exciting and interesting, I try to finish what it is that I'm making before I go on to the next thing. Well, that presents itself with lots and lots of challenges as well because not necessarily every project is appropriate for every situation. So like I was saying, I went camping with my family over the weekend and with some other families and it was all wonderful and great. And you think that like when you go camping, it's supposed to be really relaxing and you disconnect and you unplug from the rest of society and all these kinds of things. But there's a significant amount of still like chasing your kids around, cooking, tidying, all of these kinds of things. And I found that very often the time that I actually got to sit down with my knitting was when the kids actually went to sleep and it was dark outside. And knitting all over lace in this dark color is not great at nighttime, you know? And so I was, knitting this and you know I, I have memorized the pattern pretty much so I was kind of counting a little bit as I was knitting and kind of trying to feel which ones are knit stitches and which ones are purl stitches and where am I supposed to do the yarn over and is this the part where I'm going to knit now and and sometimes I would absolutely make mistakes sometimes I'd be zooming along and I knew that I made mistakes that I couldn't see and I couldn't fix because it was basically pitch black so what I had to do is I kind of had to like, just continue knitting and just continue knitting. And then the next morning when it was light again, I would go through and continue knitting. And as I got to mistakes, I would sort of tink down and then refix all those stitches and then work my way back up and fix all those stitches. So it's okay, it's like, it's fine, but it's not the fastest or the quickest thing to be knitting when you're knitting in the dark. Uh, I do like to knit in the dark, you know, at movie theaters, I knit while I watch TV, all of these kinds of things, and I don't have to look when I'm knitting stockinette or just pearls. Working all over lace, I, I, I do kind of still look a little bit. So I think I talked about this project in a previous episode, but basically what this is, is this is the Hito Fude cardigan. It is started with a provisional cast on at the bottom, and then you knit all over lace for at least 11 inches and then this will eventually be folded over and this will become a sleeve. So this is obviously not 11 inches yet because my arm won't fit through that. But that's basically what the sleeve is going to be like and then it continues on and then you knit the bottom. When I look at this cardigan and how much progress I've made on it so far, it feels like it's going to take a year to finish this project. It just feels like it's gonna take a really, really long time. And it makes me go back and think about a project that I knit many years ago. And it is this one here. This is all lace done in Jagerspun's Zephyr. I love this yarn. This is a wool and silk blend yarn. It's a Tessa silk. It is typically a yarn that is used for weaving. It's a beautiful yarn, but I just happened to get it in this color a long time ago. Um, and it's a solid, it's not hand dyed or anything like that. It's not our yarn. It's from Jagerspun. But I knit this shawl, which is called the Peacock Feathers Shawl. I knit this entire shawl in two weeks. I knit this as part of um, an Olympic challenge many, many years ago. The Yarn Harlot uh, sort of put together a 
challenge that we should all knit something within the two weeks of the Winter Olympics. And so you cast on when the opening ceremonies are happening, and then you cast off before the closing ceremonies. So for whatever reason, I thought I would join this challenge and I would do this and I knit on this, focused knitting on this, like not doing anything else, not, not interacting with people generally um, in my life for about two weeks so that I could make this shawl. So I know that it's possible to finish something that is kind of complex lace or all over lace and to be able to do it, but it does require the focus and the time and the energy and all that kind of stuff and a commitment, I think, to finishing. So I think that that is what I sort of need in this case, you know, a commitment to finishing this project. However, I also recently read the book by Austin Kleon called Steal Like an Artist. And so Austin Kleon, he is a fine artist who works with blackout lettering. He basically takes newspapers and he blacks out everything. And then he leaves a few words here and there and those words form his poetry. So he's not doing fiber arts at all, but he is a creative person and he is making art and he's making creative work that he believes in. And so I've read his book about creativity and he does suggest that it's a good idea to have more than one project on the go at any one time. So that way, if you kind of get bored with this one, you can kind of shuffle over here and work on this one for a little bit and then work on another one for a little bit and you kind of like cycle through them and stuff like that. And we've talked about like cycling through crafts and cycling through projects and cycling sort of this iterative process, cycling through all the creative ideas that you might have. So Austin Kleon's book kind of supports this idea of having different projects on the go at one time and moving between them. Now, somebody else in the School of Sweet Georgia also said something about how she has multiple projects, multiple knitting projects on the go. She always has one sweater, one shawl, one pair of socks, one hat, one cowl, one scarf, and so on and so on and so on. And so you get that idea as well. So part of me was thinking, okay, I have this sweater on the go right now. Might be nice to also have something else that is stockinette, something else that's a little bit faster and easier to knit, something else that I could knit theoretically at camping and have it be um, just very easy going and very stress-free, <laughs> not having to worry about, you know, dropping stitches and all that kind of stuff. And so with all this thinking process about, you know, making something new, finding another sweater pattern, specifically a sweater garment pattern to make, uh, I have sort of fallen down the rabbit hole of looking for another pattern to make. And uh, the other thing that's kind of contributing this to this is the fact that in the fall, we have a new yarn coming out for Sweet Georgia called the BFL and Silk DK. And so that is coming out and I really, really, really wanna make something out of that. It is Blueface Lester mixed with silk and uh, it is a non-superwash yarn. So I think it's gonna have a much more, it's a much different feel. It's gonna be a much more wooly yarn going to be, I think it'll make a great sweater actually. So that's part of the reason why I really, really want to knit something out of that yarn. Now that kind of constitutes adding yarn. It's not exactly knitting from the stash, but I did previously talk with the girls that I had made this uh, no new yarn agreement with. And uh, we had said that, oh, you know, if it's for work, then it's okay. <laughs> and theoretically everything that I make with yarn is for work, right? So in any case, I do wanna knit something out of that BFL and Silk DK. Now I'm just trying to decide which pattern. So now this is something that you guys can help me with. I have found four patterns here that I'm really quite enamored with and I think would work very well for our BFL and Silk DK. Some of them have more stuck in it than others. Some of them are a little bit easier than others. Um, but I'll share with you guys what I'm sort of thinking about. And then you can let me know in the comments which one you like the best and which one you think that I should knit. So the first one that I'm looking at is this one by Marie Green. She's also Olive Knits. You can see this pattern is called Heathrow. Heathrow, maybe it's named after the airport in, in London. But in any case, this is a cardigan sweater. It is a stockinette sweater, casual, relaxed, kind of like a, you throw over anything, very loose and kind of drapey and billowy. I like this style of garment. Um, and so this one has been in my queue for some time now. And so 
thinking this would be something that would be good for DK weight yarn. So that's Marie Green. Marie Green also has another pattern here that I'm interested in making, and it is called the Beekeeper Cardigan. This one is very cute. This one has a lot of texture to it, but from what I've heard, the texture is actually very easy to knit. So this is something else that I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about maybe knitting this in the cayenne color that we make. It's like a spicy, hot, warm red, very like vivid red, uh, a warm red, like an orangey red. I like that color. Um, so I might make that one. And then the other two are this one. I don't know how you pronounce this, Soldatna, Soldatna. Um, but this one, is not really stocking it, it's color work. I knit Caitlin Hunter's uh, color work sweater earlier. Oh, this one, the Novelli. <laughs> this one, this color work sweater. Yeah, so I knit her other color work sweater. And so this color work sweater is done with DK. The one that I'm wearing right now, this is done with fingering weight. This one's done with DK. And from what I've heard, this one is a very quick knit. And so this one seems very mm, intriguing. Also the fact that Every one of these finished soldatnas that I've seen has been in the most amazing color combinations. It's just like a mix and blend of all sorts of different things and very surprising color combinations. So this one seems like it's been really, really fun. So I'm intrigued by the color combination aspect of it. May not be the best TV knitting, but I kind of want to do this too. And then the last one is probably something that could be considered good camping knitting, good TV knitting is Andrea Mowry's The Weekender. So this one looks like it's all reverse stockinette. I think you knit it inside out so that you're basically knitting stockinette. Um, I know my girlfriend, Allison, Allison at Champagne and Kiviet, she has her channel uh, on YouTube as well. She knit her Weekender on a knitting machine, which is genius, uh, but, I do not have a knitting machine, so I would have to knit this all by hand. So that's another thing that's on my list. So if you guys have any preference, if you think one of these would be more suitable for me, color-wise, design-wise, shape-wise, I would love to hear about that in the comments. You can leave your comments below and we can talk about that some more. <laughs> Now, I know that uh, I have some other shawl ideas in my mind, things that I wanna make. I've been looking at pictures of even the pattern that we released a couple uh, weeks, months ago called Dried Petals. That one's very, very pretty. And every time I see a finished shawl, I'm always like, hmm, that one seems nice. I might wanna make that one. Now, I know that we also have another shawl pattern coming out. Uh, August 27th is our mystery knit along, and that's gonna be a shawl called Carolina Waves. Uh, that's a mystery one, so I actually don't know what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, every time I have to think about that a little bit, the fact that like, we have such trust for Tabitha, our design director, who designs the mystery knit along every year, and she designs it and I don't know what it actually looks like. I feel like I should know, but I don't know. I kind of want the surprise, but I kind of trust her enough that I know that it's gonna be great. So, Tabitha has designed Carolina Waves. That mystery in the long is gonna start August 27th. So yeah, if you guys have any suggestions on what you think are good sweater patterns to make right now, or you know, good TV knitting patterns, all of those kinds of things, please feel free to leave a comment in below and let me know, because I'm always on the hunt for something relaxing to make. <laughs> Now, I know that many of you guys might be curious as well about the results of our search for brand ambassadors for Sweet Georgia. And so what I'm hoping to do is next week, uh, we're gonna announce the names of those people who have been selected to be brand ambassadors. It's been a very, very long and arduous process of going through all of the submissions. We received a lot of submissions and we're reading each one and we're reviewing each one and we've got a whole team of people who are looking at it and everybody is, everybody is awesome and everybody is great and everybody is just so passionate about yarn and color and community and being able to connect with other people. It's really awesome, but obviously we can't pick everybody and so we're still going through all of the entries right now, but we'll announce everything next Friday. So I hope you guys will come back to hear about all of that. 
All right, I think that's it for this week. Thank you guys so much for being here to watch this, to watch me talk about my long, <laughs> my project that's gonna take forever. So if you like this episode, please do hit like. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. And we come every Friday and we talk about knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing and generally the fiber arts. So thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.